Hi guys, Spink here. This is episode 14 of our Let's Learn the Jihad Civil War 2. Resuming where we left off. And we had just completed, we had just executed, processed the turn, gone through the messages. There was no combat this turn. Um, the message of importance, though, that, that, that we did see last, last episode was that we can now form divisions. This is something we've been talking about um, since episode one, where we were um, going through the, the, the way the command system works. So we can finally now see what effect this is going to have on things. We'll select um, Stone's command here as, as our demonstration unit. And if you recall, um, what divisions was going to let us do is take the command points that are required for all of our individual units, combine them into one unit that will only cost four command points, and that will allow our our units to have a lower command penalty because we're, we're going to be using them more efficiently, and it will increase the effectiveness of our units as a result. And how we do that, we select our leader, and we'll select this center tab that is our command special orders, and click this, which will enable division command. And as you can see, his his name kind of got a little highlight on it, and that's that's an indication that that, that the units have been given a command status. Um, Army commanders have it, and I assume uh, corps commanders. When we get to those, we'll we'll show that as well. Forming a division is as simple as selecting multiple units with the control click and clicking the combine units. So now we have all of these units. If you hover over the, the division icon right here, it will show you which units are in this division. We can see that also in the pop-up it will tell us what's in there. If we select this tab again, you can see the, uh, the command cost for this unit has decreased to four and our command penalty has been reduced to ten and our uh, power displayed power here um, had a pretty good um, increase as well Let's see if we spin him back up he had 107 power with this 35 percent penalty we combine them He's up to 149, and his penalty is down to 10%. So, that's how you do a division. Now, there is something to, uh, there is some other considerations with this. Um, we didn't really talk about activation and and what it meant to not be activated, um, just due to the nature of the of the of the rule that I'm using. Which, had I known at the time I was going to be doing a tutorial rather than a let's play, maybe I would have uh, selected the uh, the regular rules. Um, but at the beginning of each turn, um, the leaders are going to be activated or not, depending on their on their command rating, their first command rating, which is the strategic value. The higher uh, the strategic value of a of a unit of a leader, the greater the chance of them being activated on any given turn. Um, McClellan uh, famously. Uh, was very hard to persuade to actually do anything and you can see his command his strategic rating is a one accordingly uh, most of them fall in the in the three and four range but when uh, when a unit fails his activation check um, he's going to have some fairly substantial penalties um, he will have a reduced movement 35 percent less movement speed he will have combat penalties in hostile regions of up to 35%. I'm just reading out of the manual here. And his offensive posture will be prohibited. Not being activated can represent delayed orders, overcautiousness, or even incompetence at the operational level or above. So that's what that represents. Um, one other note it has in the manual here when it's talking about this strategic rating and activation, it said leaderless troops are always activated as they don't have leaders but suffer from movement and combat penalties by lack of command points. Now this is something that we were wondering about. Um, what was what was 
this command point penalty actually actually penalizing from lack of command points and uh, whether it was just the the power or did it uh, affect his movement as well well from the uh, from the sound of that it sounds like uh, lack of command points is going to cause the unit to move slower than it otherwise would okay um, something else to keep in mind um, when making a unit a division is if you look here his command rating is one zero zero for for General Stone here and that that's not what he was before we made him a divisional commander so let's let's remove divisional command you can just pop this on and off as, as you need so his command rating was a three one one and when we make him a, di a divisional commander, you see that has dropped to 100, zero, zero, approximately two, two steps when we combine him into a, into a division. Now the way I see that, that, that decrease in, um, in his um, command ratings, I see that as, as kind of analogous to, to this um, command penalty for for not having enough command points for the for the for the uh, units that are in in your force is when we're a uh, when we're not a division we're acting as the force commander for this for this force and we have our command ratings that reflect that and the the uh, we're suffering a, a command penalty over here for these units because we are not providing these individual units the proper um, direction that they need because all of our attention is being taken up by being the force commander and then when we make him a division commander we've just reversed that situation we've we've uh, directed this this general's attention to be primarily focused on these individual these individual units and their and their where they're supposed to be in there and commanding them specifically and as such he is now no longer able to um, focus as much of his attention on being the force commander so that's why we see those drop that's that's the way i see how this works or, or the uh, the reasoning behind that so as such it would it would uh, it would it would seem uh, common sense that we would not use a division as an independent unit like this just a division all by himself um, I would put a force commander with this stack so he has a force commander with with his command ratings unaffected and then the division commander with his um, giving the the, uh, the the combat point reduction or command point reduction for the units there that's just how it it, it seems like would be the common sense way to do this so I think at this point we should go through our various stacks and see if we can optimize our, our command point usage by making some divisions. The first one we see and the one that uh, that um, would kind of illustrate what I was just talking about having more than one leader for a force uh, is, is down here on the peninsula with, peninsula with Butler's force. Now Butler is a three-star general uh, but we could make him a division commander. We could. Drops his uh, command ratings down to zero, zero, 001. And then we could combine these these elements with him. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and do that. And we see that his command penalties, he's, we have eight command points and four, four, four being required. But we now have our our uh, our senior officer in this in this uh, in this force having a zero zero one command rating, and it seems it would be much better to put the lower ranked commander as the division commander. Combine those, so we have the same situation over here. We've lost our our command point penalty. But Butler has his uh, has his full command ratings, such as they are, unaffected. So that's what we're going to do with this force. Let's take a look at 
Well, let's do Banks first because he's a little smaller for us. Um, we 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 had Banks come out of the uh, out of Harper's Ferry. We put him on passive to try to to bring up some of his uh, his cohesion here, and we had him meet up with Burnside and these Pennsylvania Volunteers. So right now we're looking at this force, lots of leaders here, uh, requiring 34 command points to uh, to uh, command at its full efficiency. We have eight. Um, a division takes four points, so our optimal um, force for for this leader uh, seems like to me that the two divisions would be our optimum for this guy. So let's let's make some of these guys into division commanders. I think I'm going to start with Butterfield as a, as a division commander, and that will free up these units to be force commanders. Should we should we have more units here than we can fit into two divisions? Um, these units here, um, we've seen these pop up from time to time. These named divisions that show up um, in through those scripted events. We didn't build these through our normal production. These come up. They're 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 flavor units. These are units that uh, that achieve some fame during the war. The Irish Brigade, for instance, is one we've probably heard about more more so than the California Brigade. And these are elite units. If you if you hit one of these things, elite infantry. Uh, so these these are uh, brigades that, that that during the course of the war they they achieve their reputation for being above average. So you get these from the start as as elite units. Just as an aside, thought I'd explain those. Okay, so let's take Butterfield and we'll take one of these this Irish brigade here. Scroll down. We'll grab the artillery unit. Now there is has been calculated to be an optimal division with X number of infantry and X number of cavalry and X number of, uh, of artillery units, but I try not to think in those terms. I try not to think in game terms as much as I can. Um, I like to have about two to three batteries of artillery, uh, 10 to 12 um, infantry, for instance, and a, a, a regiment or two of cavalry, um, maybe even more infantry and, and not do the cavalry. I don't know. I don't really, I don't really think too much about it. I just want to have a division. Now, um, to optimize your uh, your command points, um, it makes sense to make these these units as close to a full to their full uh, amount as you can, which is 18 elements. This currently has 13, so we could we could stick another five in here. Um, here's four. Maybe we'll put that in there. So he now has 17. Uh, historically, divisions, especially um, Union divisions, were generally not this big. But um, the way the command system works in this, it's it's really you really have to to go this route with them. And then uh, McCall here, I'm going to stick a divisional command on him. See how many of these units we can pop in for him. He's can, he's already at 17, and he's at 17, and we have two brigades left over. Well, we could probably um, juggle these units, you know, the exact makeup of them, and, and maybe squeeze one more of these guys in. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to take. Let's see. He's command cost two, command cost two. So they they um, putting those into a division isn't going to gain us anything. Um, we are um, sitting at 12 though, so what I'm going to do, this is a this is a good enough force. I think I'm going to take the Washington Brigade, the Pennsylvania Brigade, Runyon and Heinzelman out of this. Well, let's... Whoops. I grabbed too many of them. The division back there. So we have Burnside. Well, he's actually senior to All right, so, then, so I'm going to use him. Okay, so now we have two forces here. We have a uh, Burnside's force of uh, two brigades and if we 
grab him you see, we can see we're we're right where we want to be here a four four and that's because we have two brigadier generals which gives eight halved gives our four so that works out for us and Patterson's command we don't need to call this Patterson's command I'm going to take um, banks out and then put Patterson's command into banks so now it's banks command okay and our uh, our cohesion is good enough. We're going to take these guys out of a passive. Um, the, the weather is cleared. It's no longer muddy up here. So we did have that one, that one turn of muddy weather here to possibly slow down whatever. Uh, if Johnson had any aims on going further north. Okay, so if we look at um, Banks Command now, which you recall we had that 35% command penalty, and now we don't. Now we're we're just right where we want to be. So a uh, two divisions is about as much as you're really going to put in an independent command because we are going to be stuck with that uh, pretty much pretty close to that eight maximum. So so two divisions is about a uh, an independent command's worth of force. Um, when we're able to form cores um, later on, about March of 1862, um, we'll be able to uh, to have a two or a three star general commanding that core, and he will he will be considered part of an army so McDowell here for instance in this army would be able to have a unit sitting over here that is a core of that army and as such will no longer have the uh, the penalty of having the command points halved so we will have we will be back to our maximum of 16 command points that we could have in one of these stacks and that will allow four divisions so Generally, when we get when we get to there, we'll we'll, we'll start looking at making um, four division cores, and then as many cores as we can as we can handle with that. So there's Banks and Burnside with their uh, with their forces. And we could even divide those up a little differently. I don't know exactly um, I'm not going to worry about movement just yet I'm going to go through and, and see if we can build up some of these uh, divisions um, let me see okay McClellan here has a 10 command points here which is what we would expect to see only 8 so let's think about let's see if we can figure out how he got to 10 well, one thing that we know he's got is this headquarters support unit, which has a signal company attachment that gives him a plus one command point. So let's take that out of his stack and see what that puts him. That drops him down to eight. So that by itself appears to be what's giving him the ten. And it looks like it's only supposed to apply one, so I'm not exactly sure how that's how it's going from uh, up to ten with just that there. Okay, so let's see what are we going to do for um, for this army to get it built back into something that can that can fight. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven artillery batteries. So I like to put two to three batteries in a division. Um, this unit here, we can probably make three divisions in here and have a uh, a small penalty. Um, let's see. Why don't we start at the bottom for division command, so that we can uh, keep some of our higher units here for for independent command of, of uh, field forces if we need them. That's 11 elements. Grab two artillery. What are we looking at now? 13. Grab some of these conscripts in there. And we're going to keep this unit uh, stationary and let McClellan train this up, train up these conscripts. So he's at 17, that looks fine. We're going to do Mansfield. 1, 2, 3, 
four, say. It puts him at 11. We'll grab two of these artillery batteries. Is it 15? Let's grab another one of these. Okay. And Sumner here. We'll grab all the rest, let's say. Okay, so now we have three divisions. This one's only got nine elements in it. 17, 17. Our, uh, our force strength is much higher here. And our command penalty is down to 10%. We have two more than we can handle in here because we have three divisions, which gives us that 12. Um, if we were to take Sumner out, for instance, then we'd lose that command penalty and he's at his full power. We could do that and take, say, Hooker and put him in charge of that other division. That works. So now we don't have any command penalties there. And we have a fairly substantial force under Hooker that we could put elsewhere if we need to, but I think we'll just keep those here. So that's the, uh, what will be the Army of the Potomac once, uh, well we could put him back in charge of something, but I'm rather hesitant to do so. So let's it's not that, McC that uh, McDowell has poor ratings so much that, that it's just that the uh, the disaster that was the uh, his previous foray, even though it was my fault entirely, not his. Okay, so we're going to start building up our forces here. This is our, this is our gathering things, and we'll form divisions and and move them up into uh, into the forward areas. Okay, let's move over here. Um, makes sense to make Howe here the division commander. And if you do have multiple units in here when you select the stack, um, if you don't want that first leader to be the division commander, make sure you swap him over. It can sometimes sneak past you. This little mess of a unit. Oh, we increased from nine to from from seven power to six. Wow, or to from seven to nine. So that's awesome. We now no longer have a command penalty on him. We're going to get him back to Clarksburg, and um, and recover our cohesion so that we can we can become an effective force again. Uh, Blanker out here. Um, I don't really see any benefit to. Uh, to making him a division um, due to his small force. He's got a 15%. Um, well, let's take a look at it. He is a 422 leader, which is pretty good for us at this stage. If we combined him, we only drop from a 15% penalty to a 10 penalty, and in the process, we, we our uh, command ratings you know, became quite poor. So, I think we'll just leave him as 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 a force commander and not a brigade commander. Um, hmm. We have this unit here, Nelson here. This is definitely something that we're going to bring. Uh, we'll bring Nelson's force in here. Which of them is senior? He's 96, and Hurlbut is 95. So not, so Hurlbut will be the force commander. And Nelson will be the division commander, so let's make him the division commander. Combine these, and we'll just move this whole force over here by rail. Okay. Um, right here, what are we looking at for... Uh, I don't think we have enough here for uh, for uh, kind of stack some of these guys around. I don't think we have enough of troops here for two divisions.
but we do have enough for one, and I'll give that to McLarenand. McLarenand is senior to Lou Wallace. So we'll just grab all of the troops. How's that going to give us 12? And that will give us 18. So there's a division here. And I think we'll take him and Grant and see if we can bring him across to Paducah. Not that way. I guess that's the way he wants to go. Let's see, can we put him... He's crossing the river twice. That doesn't make any sense. I guess that's the way they want to do him, though. There we go. So he's going to cross the river and get here. Um, we may end up crossing into the face of a fight here, but uh, whatever's coming up against us is pretty minor. We should have brought these guys out last turn. I just completely spaced it out. Um, St. Louis, do we have anything here yet? Um, where We had a bunch of other leaders. What happened to those? Oh, Morel's force here. Um, let's take say three of these leaders and send them to St. Louis and these will be um, some division commanders for St. Louis. Um, I think I would like to make Lion rather than make him a division. I think I would like to, to take two of these leaders here, bring them up here possibly with some more force, at least one of these guys, make him a division commander and then keep Lion as the force commander here. Okay, what else do we have? We're going to go cycle through our E keys. We're down to three minutes or so left. Here's another one of these elite units. I'm going to move him down to McDowell's force, start bringing this stuff together, the regular brigade. Bring them down. Barnett's brigade. Oh, we've got a bunch of force that these are units that we've recruited here all of our New York brigades is that what this is I'm going to bring this whole force down here to McDowell we're going to really start building this uh, force up now we have a cavalry unit that showed up in Omaha I think I'm going to bring them down. Oh, this is the Kansas Reaction Force. So this is something that reacted to one of these units being coming into our territory here. I think I'll take these down to Leavenworth. We can probably bring those by sea movement. Yeah, that shortened him up. Put him on the steamboats. The Excelsior Brigade. This is our, uh, our our garrison here at the uh, Denver Depot. Uh, we have a unit sitting here. In, I believe we moved this guy down here to uh, to garrison this uh, this gold mine. Uh, we do have 20, 55% Union rating here. Uh, we got some forces moving down into these uh, copperhead force that are oh they're really wasting away now um, so I think I could put um, this force on a, on a uh, I could put this force on an offensive footing and attack that unit but there's really no need to um, he's gonna you know, we're going to have this force up here next turn. We're going to be bringing these down here. There's no need to to actually take any casualties over this. I mean, there's just no reason to. So we'll wait, give this guy another turn to, to, to starve, and then we'll have this other force in here, and then we'll, we'll smack him. Okay, we have Ritter here. I was trying to think about what to do with these guys while their supply goes down, about not really moving more, more force down here to help eat up their supply. 
But what we can move down here to Fort Craig is is Carson himself, and that will um, he is a fairly good leader here. Um, his activation chance is quite high, rooting fairly high for what we've seen. He does have a, a bit of a uh, bonus for the offense and defense. Nothing to write home about, but better than nothing. So we'll bring him down here, and that won't hurt our our supply situation at all. But it will improve our our combat our combat force our ability. Uh, and there's his brigade here. I don't see anything, to, any reason not to just leave him here. Um, as a, I think we're going to end up retreating. Not really trying to fight for this stuff too heavy because of our supply situation, and uh, we'll we'll have uh, Santa Fe as as our area that we don't want to lose. I believe that's a strategic city. It is, so we don't want to lose that. And in the meantime, we're going to be working on our supply lines coming down through there. Next, we have this force here. We we're looking at those. Let's use our. We're just going to keep these guys here. Are they inside? They're inside the fort. Do we want to be inside the fort or do we want to be in the field? I think we're going to put these guys actually in the field. Well, that gives us no no entrenchment value. Whereas when we were in here, we had an entrenchment value of three. Maybe it would be wiser to keep them there. These guys again. See you. Philadelphia Brigade. So we got a lot of these uh, these elite brigades coming in. Here was that other unit of artillery for Illinois, for uh, the St. Louis force. Um, Wenzel. So we are just a basically a garrison force for Fairmont. Banks' force. Um, is there anything we want to do with these guys? Um, one thing it would seem wise to do is take this uh, empty supply wagon and we're going to send him to Baltimore. Use the rails. If we go up to our um, supply thing here, you can see no supply went into this uh, went into this region at all. We've got scads of supply up here in, uh, in Baltimore, so uh, we'll bring this guy back, get him uh, supplied up, and uh, See what we can do here. Um, it, you know, maybe we'll take one of these supply wagons, the one that's a little less, and give him to Burnside, just to make sure Burnside's got some uh, got some supply. Um, what do we want to do with these guys? Do we want to move them over here? Why don't we move Burnside here to provide a little bit of blocking for this? If uh, Johnson wants to bowl him over. He certainly there's. We're not going to really be able to stop him. Contrabands. This is basically a a unit that we can use to do rail repairs a little faster than we would otherwise do. We do have two units of uh, West Virginia volunteers here that are gonna that are gonna meet up with Mailroy when he comes in and give Mailroy a fairly decent force. Back to here. I'm not going to do anything. I think we've set these guys for what they're going to do. Again with Hooker. I think we'll just leave him there. Uh, we have Kentucky Cavalry. Oh yes, these guys were going to repair this railroad. That's what we moved them at here. We'll use the special orders here and we'll rebuild rail. This is also the tab you use for destroying rail. So like when if you do a raid into the enemy territory, you'll destroy the rail. And that happens before you move. So you, if we plotted a move um, for this guy, he would destroy this rail and then move. But we'll just leave him there. We're going to repair that rail. Um, we have our cavalry units here. Oh, we, these are the guys that were scouting out Jefferson City. So we have a really good um, view on this guy now. He's uh, just a single brigade. I think that's cavalry. Um, we're definitely in range of being able to take this guy out with, with uh, either one of our forces here once they're able to move. Um, kind of curious as to where Price got off to. What's our supply situation? We're at half supply. 
Um, hmm. <laughs> Why don't we take these guys to the Hermitage here? Hermitage, Missouri. I don't think that's the Hermitage. That's Hermitage, Missouri. Uh, the same thing, we're going to keep him on a retreat if engaged. We don't want to lose any of our cavalry for a meaningless engagement. So we're just coming down here to, to have a look-see. We don't know what's in there. But we're going to take a look here, and then his supply section will be such we're going to need to get him back to Lexington to, to get more supply. Here's Wood in Evansville. Well, that's a... We could bring him across the river and, and uh, garrison Madison, but I think I'm going to take him and link him up or add him to the to the force that Halleck is forming here. And with that and with what's there, we should be getting pretty close to forming a second division there. Lion. <laughs> I think for for now, since his stats are so high we can make him a uh, a division and he's still in, in real good shape as far as his stats go um, our supply is good our control is good the confederacy has 100% military control in these areas so we can't um, pass supply through there but we don't really need to it might be of some value to move him to here. The weather is good, though it is getting late in th in the season here. What if we were to put him there? Can we move him there quickly by rail? Uh, not any quicker than that. Um, nine days to get there. What would it be? Fourteen days. We might be able to do that. We'll leave him on attack. And we'll see if we can move him up and grab Jefferson City while we're here. And maybe, no, I think we'll leave that. We'd, we're only going to have the one militia unit here in Rolla to, to garrison that. Maybe we will take, since this is a pretty important place, and we're starting to build up some force in, in St. Louis now, why don't we take a couple more militia regiments up there, we'll, we'll railroad them up there, and that, that's going to have this good and secure and let's uh, certainly be able to hold it long enough for us to get uh, to get our force back to here if it's if it's anything serious, if it's just a raid, they'll be able to hold off for that. Okay, so that is there, Hurlbut. Uh, I think he's just going to hang out here. What are we looking like for military control? Now we don't have, you know, we've only got 50% military control in these areas, which means that the Confederacy can pass supply through them if they need to. Uh, we do have the railroad bend torn up here. Uh, the, the loyalty in this region is not great. 64%, 65, 64. So this is something that we we need to keep an eye on. Um, we are going to repair the railroad here. Uh, we're back to Butler. We've looked at these guys. Uh, Carson, we've looked at those, we've looked at these, we've looked at those. Um, that's just a garrison, so let's put him on permanent sentry. We've looked at this guy. Um, hmm, I wonder if we should make this guy a division. I don't know, I'm just going to leave him like that. What did we decide to do here? We made him a division. I think I, think I am going to undo that. And my thinking for that is this 35% penalty that I get if I'm not activated on any given turn. And with a 3 command rating, we're going to be activated more often than if we have a 1 command rating. So I wonder if that, if that not being active um, penalty is greater than what, we're, than what we would gain by making him a so I'm going to leave him. Ideally, I'm going to have two leaders in each of my independent stacks. Blinker, we're good with him. Asbeth, um, he's mostly mostly uh, recovered here. The uh, the militia is is still suffering. We 
he's got well, he's got a supply wagon, but we definitely don't want him on passive anymore. Um, hmm. I think since um, Lion is coming up this way, I don't know if there's any need to bring him down. But let's do it anyway, just so, just because. Okay. Now, I did see that um, militia moves slower than regular infantry, and we do have a militia regiment in here. Let's take this militia regiment out and see if that changes our 18-day arrival time. Back to the Lexington Force, 18 days. It doesn't. So whatever move slower movement this may have, it doesn't appear to be that big a deal. This is our force here that's going to meet up with those guys. We've looked at, that's the rail repair. We've looked at this guy. We looked at this guy. We've looked at this guy. Okay, so we're through with those. We're going to hit, go through our naval forces. There's our transport sitting there. We have a gunboat squadron that's uh, it's in good shape. We're going to leave him here. This is a squadron within Fort Monroe. This is also in Fort Monroe, so we might as well combine those. Here's our transports. Um, do we have transports here? Yeah. Well, let's combine all of this here. Just kind of see where we're at now. Oh, we were... Uh, now this is interesting. We had this, but we're on passive. We had this as blockaded before without any ships outside of Fort Monroe. I wonder why it's now not. That's something I'm definitely going to have to figure out. Something here, this, uh, this blockade flotilla, um, I think this is one that was supposed to stay in Boston and get, and get fixed up. I left him, left him there and, uh, I brought him with us accidentally, I think. I'll just leave him here in his own stack. How about that? So he can get he can get uh, recovered somewhat. And we're going to take one, two, three, and then four, I guess. We'll just, oh, wait. Three, and then we have all these little scouting squadrons. We'll take two of these forces, and we're going to bring these out into the James Estuary on an offensive posture kind of attack anything that should happen to stick its nose down there and there's the squadron we're going to hopefully that'll build up um, we're still not we still don't have the ammo here that that we need we got plenty of ammo here well, it's just taking a while I guess I don't remember you know I think we were we're still building him up. Okay, the Atlantic Squadron, we're doing okay here. Um, St. Louis, we're fully up. We're in Fort Pickens. Let's take him out there just, just for the heck of it. We could maybe even, well, we can't get him into the river. We'll just leave him right there. The Portsmouth is in, is active here. What else do we have? Another Atlantic squadron here. Uh, what the heck? We'll bring these down, and eventually we're gonna we're gonna have to do something with these forces. Um, we'll do a uh, another blockade somewhere or a uh, invasion of some sort. force. Very good. Here, um, two units. We'll put those in the Atlantic Fleet. This Union Detachment, he's not ready yet. Transfers. Okay, so that's all of our movement. Uh, we're, we're definitely over time here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this now, and uh, next episode we will um, we'll run the turn. Oh, we, we'll have to do production. We'll, we'll do production. We'll do our uh, any of our policies up here, we'll, we'll see if we need to do any of those, and we'll do our our regional regional decisions down here, and then and then we'll run the turn. But that's it for now. So I will see you next time.